very welcome back. Now, government advice to avoid all non-essential travel abroad has been extended until the 20th of July. However, many flights have already resumed, so what can we expect when we do fly again? Well, travel expert Owen Carey was one of the first people to experience the new arrangements at Dublin Airport and on the plane when he flew to Malta last week. And he's here now to tell us what it was like to travel. Owen. It's a very interesting one because Malta is quite a safe destination and very choosy about who they let in. Uh, they've let the Irish in last Wednesday. They're still considering whether to let the British in. And the reason is they have zero cases for quite a while now. And they're watching, as is the whole of Europe, watching what happens when you open your borders. Yeah, I, it's strange that you're there because I was actually in Malta at the very start of lockdown and we came home early. And it was, I was actually very impressed at how they scaled up immediately to stop people coming in, self-quarantine in closed places. It was very, very rapid response. They've had a total of nine deaths, Alan, and they've had uh, zero cases, and they're watching for imported cases. Their dilemma is much the same as mu uh, the rest of Europe's. Their uh, uh, tourism is about 25 to 30 percent of their GDP. It's about 10 percent of ours. So the same sort of questions about when do you open, who do you open to, they're going through that debate. They've, they've managed their COVID-19 extremely well. And getting, when you land here, the first thing you meet is a temperature check camera in the airport and a team of three medics who call aside people randomly or people that are showing up in the temperature check for further further testing and of course the aviation experience has all changed uh, masks on board is pretty much mandatory across europe according to the european aviation standards association and the european cdc standards which were published on june the 12th so on what was it like then when you arrived at the airport and you've been through airports hundreds and hundreds of times well how is how is it different from you for you uh, last week when you were traveling the big thing people would notice is masks the second thing they'll notice is a different policy for cabin bags ryanair want people to take their bags on board Aer Lingus, which i wasn't flying with i was flying with ryanair they have a policy where they like to uh, bring the bags in the hold and have less people standing in the aisle wearing masks on board um, and there is no social distancing on an aircraft according to the uh, easa standard which means debates like keeping the middle seat empty they've all they're not happening but what is interesting is that the um, the aviation the flying part of it is probably the easiest and safest part of it a lot of the fears are around the airport experience and the busing experiences and that's where airports have really had to step up with issues like security in Dublin Airport where they would have four bays only two of them are open arriving in Malta a lot of uh, temperature checking even in hotels and uh, waiting staff wearing masks very 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 careful because they know uh, that tourism is vital but health is even more vital but on when you were queuing for the plane was there social distancing were people all rushing to the plane like normal it's quite interesting that you people do have this sort of uh, genetic thing when they see the gate open that they all rush and uh, get crushed up close to each other it more or less worked and i think it will work better as the airports are open i traveled wednesday when there were about ten and a half thousand people going to the airport to put that in context that were four thousand was what we were doing during our skeleton service time and it would be over a hundred thousand normally the airport is marked out like supermarkets were marked out I know a lot of uh, viewers will have thought at the beginning, how can supermarkets manage checkout queues? It's all worked. I fear, I feel the airport system will work. When you think back at the way we had to change our airport experience after 9-11 on things like liquids, I suspect the post-coronavirus age is going to be something similar, different uh, airport experience and a different flying experience with a few more inconveniences, such as wearing the masks. Interestingly, one or two people who took the mask off during the flight you're allowed to take it off to eat, but not generally. They were called out on the tannoy, and not named person in row 17, but they said, please put your mask back on, and they said, thank you. So the airlines, the airports, everyone is taking this very, very seriously. Now, we're being told not to travel at the moment, but that will change down the line. And when we get to somewhere, we travel to somewhere like Malta, what changes have you seen when you've been there, when you get to your hotel, for example? 
it's very similar to the opening up at homes. It's hand sanitizer because let's face it, that's where the real action is going to be. Uh, everybody washing hands frequently. So hand sanitizer everywhere. Lots of extra staff, uh, perspex, uh, wearing of masks. Usually the visor mask is easier for staff uh, in a lot of the. But when you're out in the sunshine, it is much the same. The beaches will be marked off uh, across the European, the major tourist destinations, to prevent uh, crowds congregating too close together in beaches and I noticed some of the resorts have put designated areas for vulnerable people like for over 70s. The experience a wee bit different but let's face it if you're going to be safe from this virus out in the open air with the wind blowing through your hair uh, cycling around Malta or on a boat and plunging in the sea that's going to be the safer end of it. The real key Alan as you said is for governments and health authorities to get their head around when it's safe to open the borders. Uh, there is a parallel universe where the Irish uh, system, the Irish health authorities are saying uh, it's not safe to travel and they're going to uh, extend, they're extending that uh, 12, 14 uh -huh. days uh, mandatory quarantine, uh, quarantine on return for another two weeks until July, July the 20th. But uh, people are flying because um, what the government says is really only relevant to travel insurance. Um, the public are, are uh, buying the seats that are available at very, very good prices from the aviation industry. And the rest of Europe has had a plan or is going through a phasing, which is very different from ours, borders to open on June the 15th and return to normal flying in most countries, including our big destination, Spain, on July the 1st. We seem to be slower in that process. We can obsess a little bit. If we're two or three weeks behind, it isn't that big a deal. But if it gets longer than that, our inbound industry is very, very vulnerable. And very quickly, just um, who was on the plane? How full was it? It was about 70% full. What I noticed about the first flight is a lot of people who got caught the wrong side of the border when the lockdown came because, uh, as you alluded to in your introduction, Malta locked down very, very quickly. They're very close to Italy. They were watching what was happening there. And there were a lot of long-term, long-stay people, people who had homes out here or apartments out here. As I suspect the first few flights will have a lot of those very few short-term holidaymakers and that's going to take a little bit longer to return and largely sometimes because of the government advice and partly because people just want to see how it works I think when the first people start coming back and the government restrictions ease we'll see something returning to a normal tourist season it won't be anything like we've seen before in terms of volume but the way the European Commission look at this Alan is they see European tourism as domestic tourism. They treat the entire economy as one and the whole of South Europe is very, very heavily dependent on it. Well, before we lose the signal there, thank you. Enjoy the sunshine, Owen. Looks like it's beautiful there. Thank it's you. really hard work, Alan. I'm <laughs> trying my best. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. And just a quick reminder that the government advice on non, uh, to avoid all non-essential travel abroad has been extended for another two weeks and a green list of countries to, is expected to be published on the 20th of July to those countries that we can travel to.